Hello, folks. Hello, hello, hello. Howdy, chat. Hope everybody's doing phenomenal. Hope everybody had a great weekend this weekend. Let's get up and rolling. Could it be enough to get stocks back on track towards a year-end rally? Let's ask A.J. Oden, J.P. Morgan's global investment strategist, with me here at Post 9. It's good to see you. Welcome back. Good seeing you too, Scott. It is an interesting market move today. What do you make of it? Well, I think, you know, when we saw rates almost touch, touch that 5% mark, I mean, they were they were basically at a buy at 4%, but 5% just becomes that point where you've got to lean in now. And so, you know, hearing that institutional investors are starting to lean in and add duration, it only makes sense for, for you know, the rest of the market to start to make that move as well. And maybe we saw too much of a sell for some of the geopolitical tensions that we've seen over the last couple of weeks that have brought the market down a bit. That's pretty much Ackman's point. We can show his tweet, of course, which happened, you know, earlier today and really did have an impact on the market. Just too much risk. There's too much risk, he says, in the world to remain short bonds at current long-term rates. The economy is slowing faster than recent data suggests. So he covers a short. What does it mean, though, for now, for, for the market itself, for stocks? If he's right, if we assume that rates have peaked, what's it mean? I think it means that investors should start to add in duration now. They've been waiting for that moment for, for rates to fall or for you know the market to sort of give them that point where they need to get move move out of rolling T-bills or those cash positions and start adding duration. So to me, this is that moment, and they should actually take that opportunity to move in. Now, I understand that growth expectations are still pretty high. We've got GDP expected to come out later this, this week and you know expectations of above 4% on a quarter-over-quarter quarter basis or year-over-year -year basis. So, that, to me, you know, that's probably one reason why yields have been up on top of all the other things that we've been talking about. But I think clients need to, or investors need to stop trying to time the market and lean in now because it's going to be a bottleneck when it actually starts to move. It's going to move pretty quickly. Now, you know, before rates really started to shoot. Interesting. He, this man uh, basically just stated that, you know, if you want to get in the market, you better get in now because, you know, once uh, people start piling in, it's going to, uh, you know, let's just call it go up pretty fast. Uh, which is an interesting perspective and definitely a perspective that is, uh, you know, very much a possibility. Obviously, there's a million things to be worried about right now. And uh, usually when you got a million things to worry about, there's usually a time to be buying. Right. We haven't seen. We've still got the big tech names the, re the rest of this week. And we're still optimistic that we've seen the trough. Those last three quarters were probably the last three negative quarters, at least in this cycle, that we'll see. And hopefully yes. we'll get that positive I back. I know the market has moved away. And I was expecting, I think, about 0.4% contraction. But we believe that we're still going to see a positive earnings. And so from there, you should see a tailwind. And that soft landing is still very much in play, even though we've seen some economic data that may have spooked investors a little bit. We expected volatility, and that's what we should expect from a couple data points, or just a few data points. Well, I just want to underscore what we're watching on the screen here. I mean, a 10-year note yield down 17 basis points today, right? I mean, it was a, a smidge over 5%, and then, you know, it, it pulls back. Let, let's assume that, you know, rates back off instead of back up, right? They back off a bit, and tech earnings this week come in as expected, if not better than expected. Is that enough? If, if you just wrap your arms around that, is it enough to get stocks to, to where the bulls want them to go for the next, you know, I don't know, two months. Oh, I think definitely. I think if rates start to come down, then the bulls definitely lean in, and that's why we're telling clients, you take advantage of both sides of this equation. The 60-40 portfolio has never looked this attractive. We actually look, took, a, took advantage of looking at it from a real yield perspective, and what we've seen since 2010, real yielding at 5.5%, if you go forward about 12 months, mm -hmm. on average, you get about a total return of about 18%. And right now, it's flashing around 5.6% wow. from a real yield perspective. So we're telling clients to lean in. So take the opportunity on, on this entry point in bonds, but also take that opportunity in equities right now. So I think they should both lean in on both sides. Wow, the 60-40 portfolio never looked this attractive because the narrative over the last couple of years was the 60-40 portfolio <laughs> might be dead. <laughs> Now we really have a change. Yeah, we definitely have a change now. I mean, when you when you when you finally see yield on that fixed. You know, the one thing I will say about that, uh, to be fair, is every time in the financial markets, folks, you ever hear them say, uh, "This is dead." That's exactly the time it usually bottoms. Uh, so yeah, if, if people are all out there saying, "Oh, the 60-40 portfolio is dead," that's usually the time period it's going to come back. Uh, it's just consistently how it's always been uh, throughout time. It's absolutely amazing. By the way, shout out to everybody that's here. I appreciate y'all being here. As always, thanks so much, folks. Uh, thank you, everybody, in the chat. We have, as far as safety stocks go, we have Kroger down here today, uh, Kelanova, which is the snack side of the business down here today, about a percent. Dollar Tree's down, Target's down, Coca-Cola's down. Um, we have Kraft Heinz down, Campbell's Soup down. 
Jam and Jelly break even, which for Jam and Jelly, that's a that's a flip and flapjack, and uh, that's you know, that's a win because that stock seems like it goes down every single day. We call that PayPal. I mean, what what? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's check out the possible buys list here today. Looks like the strongest one's WBA. WBA is weird. The way the way WBA is acting lately is just like I, WBA is acting like it's a penny stock. I mean, here we are with this pharmaceutical giant, pharmacy giant, right? And uh, PayPal or, or WBA is just all over the flipping place. Like, what is going on with this stock? It's insane. The moves have been so violent in regards to WBA. I mean, it's acting like it's Rivian. Uh, Rivian's green, about four percent here today. Winning Resorts is up about 3.5%. Amazon's having a good day. RH is having a good day. I want RH to go down. I want Estee Lauder to go down. Uh, Whirlpool's down. Whirlpool's getting pretty darn attractive down here in these ranges. Hope, that stock should bottom, likely either this quarter or next quarter. That would be my guess. Uh, Dutch Bros is down in the $24 range here today. And then Foot Locker is the big downward mover. Mattel's down. Mattel has earnings this week, if I recall. Uh, let's see the stocks I'm hedged against. So, Polaris is down. Chipotle, which reports earnings this week, is down. Um, Apple's up. Estow's up. Tesla's up. Uh, Toll Brothers is up. So, as far as the hedges, uh, not the best day for them overall. AI stocks. What's going on here? So, my AI stocks watch list. The only stock that's red here today is AMD. AMD is about a percent red. Then you go ahead and look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA is up over 4%. So very strange to see AMD that weak here today and see NVIDIA that strong here today. Great day for Meta, which means, folks, what does it mean if it's likely, likely a good day for Meta? That means it's likely a good day for the public account. That's what that means. So somebody said, you know, you wouldn't be surprised if I think the PayPal is going to jump double digits after earnings. After seeing what happened to AXP, do I still feel the same about PayPal? I still feel pretty confident about PayPal, um, to be honest. We'll see, though, obviously. Um, the great news for me is, I mean, it's really irrelevant because I'm buying PayPal till the end of the year anyways. So I kind of hope it goes down. But I don't know, man. Not, not super, super confident in regards to that. Uh, somebody says PayPal is not a 10x, 2x all day, but 10x, uh, they better create a new game changing product. Yeah, 10x, I mean, you're talking about that would be what a $600 billion, $500, $600 billion market cap. Uh, you know what a 10x? Hey, it's always possible. Uh, but yeah, they're going to need to put up some freaking amazing, amazing, amazing numbers for a while um, to do that. Uh, somebody asked for my thoughts on Amazon earnings. Uh, super confident, super confident in Meta and Amazon, uh, to be quite honest, super duper confident. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I think they're going to come through. So as far as banking goes today, Ally Bank down over 2%. Bank of America is having trouble catching a bit, man. Um, the Bank of America to stock down 23% this year. It's a big move for a big dog like a Bank of America. Big tech here today. Intel, Intel is the biggest L of the day. Intel's down about 3%. Best stock of big tech here today is NVIDIA at a 3.9% move. Once again, Meta's having a good move, so it should be a good day in the public account, especially since Tesla is cut off the bleeding here today. So Tesla hit a low today of, whoa, 202? Shit. I should have freaking been up this morning. I probably would have covered my put options. Are you freaking kidding me? 202? Dude. Should have freaking woke up at 5.30 this morning. Not 5.30, excuse me, 8.30. Wait, 5.30. No, 5.30, I mean. What the hell, man? Like, freaking... Tesla went to 202 today? You gotta be kidding me. 202? Damn. Oh, well, as they say, the early bird catches a worm. Damn. 
Like, I would have loved to just get out of those puts at 202 this morning. Are you kidding me? My puts would have been up 70% probably. And that's in a matter of like days. Uh, so 70% like that quick. I would have I would have probably just cashed uh, if I was up and I saw a Tesla at 202 today. And be like, that's good. I'll take my profit and, and move out of my put options on Tesla. Are you kidding me? Freaking 202. Wow, I'm shocked. That baby went all the way down there this morning. And now it's at 212. So big difference in price. And that's going to, you know, when you're talking about 202 versus 212, the, what's that, that's going to change my put option contracts easily 15 percentage points, if not 20 plus percentage points, folks. Um, it's, it's not a small number, I can tell you that. Damn. Wow. Anybody buy the dip this morning, in Tesla? I mean, 202? Jeez. Okay. Wow. Love to see WTI down that much. Almost a 3% downward move for WTI here today. And why is, why is WTI down so much here today? I can tell you exactly why. This is one of those situations where the Middle East did not get, uh, let's call it a huge escalation over the weekend. And if there's not a huge escalation, then crude oil chills down a little bit, right? So, somebody says Bitcoin is going to moon in Q4 2025. Okay, that's a little bit out there. By the way, shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you for being here, folks. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, why do you want to see WTI down, they said. Uh, a lot of reasons. So, main thing is, basically, you know, Oil, the more oil goes up, it's just a tax on the consumer. It's just a tax on the average person out there, right? Um, a lot of people don't drive EVs. Like most people still drive internal combustion engine vehicles. So you are taxed every single week when you go to that fuel pump. But you don't know how much you're going to be taxed, right? Gas might be $4 a gallon. It might be $3 a gallon. It might be $5 a gallon. It might be $6 a gallon. It might be $7 a gallon. You don't know how much you're going to be taxed. The higher WTI is, the more you're going to be taxed, Right? And so at the end of the day, if I want to see the consumer doing well, if I want to see the economy doing well, I want them to not be taxed every time they go to the pump and, you know, be taxed at a much lesser number, right? The second component is, you know, if you're talking about higher oil prices, that breeds into all transportation in general, which ultimately at the end of the day, uh, it, it can cause inflation to be stickier and higher, right? Because think about all the transportation of goods, all the supply chain, it all gets affected by the price of oil. And so, you know, as somebody that wants to see inflation not be a problem for us next year, right? I don't want to deal with inflation in 2024. I want that to be an afterthought. That is what I want. If we're going to get there, we need an oil price to help us out, right? If oil price is spiking and is $120, $130, $140 a barrel, we got problems. Because that means everybody's gas price is going to be significantly higher. That means transportation of goods around is going to be much more expensive. That means all fuel cost in general is going to be much more expensive. It's going to, you know, mean a lot of problems, right? So we need WTI to not be a problem. We need WTI to continue to come down this fall and into the winter time, and that will help just be another component that sets us up for inflation not really being a problem next year. Okay, GSG commodity index in general, which is extremely important. Uh, if you don't have GSG on your watch list, I would add GSG on your watch list. Okay, it's very very good to have GSG on there. So commodity index in general, it's going to let you know what's going on with commodities. That's down about 1.5% here today. I like that. I like that a lot, a lot, a lot. I mean, the reason I'm so attracted to PayPal over Square is because you get PayPal, plus you get Venmo, plus you get the Braintree side of it. And you get some other services as well, but those are the three main services. Whereas look at Square, and I see Cash App there, right? And I see the traditional business. I just feel like, I feel like Square is more of maybe a little bit of a, a one-trick pony versus I feel like... Uh, you know, PayPal is just an overall conglomerate. They can kind of make all these systems and things work together. So that's just kind of my opinion. That's why I've always kind of preferred PayPal. Obviously, PayPal has a longer track record too. Um, they're obviously the bigger company. They're, you know, I, I don't know. There's just a lot of advantages I see with PayPal over Square. So I think they can both be fine over time. And if PayPal performs tremendous um, in 2024, uh, don't be surprised if Square performs, you know, tremendous as well. They probably both will. It's just, I, you know, if you got to pick one, I'm picking PayPal any day of the week. FICO, oh my gosh. FICO's calling my name, man, in terms of hedging against it. FICO. 
Oh, man, that's tempting. FICO, the thing that scares me about hedging against FICO, I'll be honest, and I think what's kept me from not hedging against the stock so far is just a fact of like, they almost have like a monopoly. Like, think about it. You, you know, everybody knows FICO credit score. Like, if you, have, if you know anything about credit, you know the FICO credit score. And so, I'm like, do I want to hedge against a company that basically has a monopoly type market share? And it doesn't seem like the government's doing anything or going to do anything to break up their monopoly type market share right now, right? And if you look at their income statement, it's a very consistent income statement. I mean, look at these numbers. It's about as consistent as it gets, right? But the thought process is, okay, if there's a lot less people getting credit, so let's say there's a recession that hits, and I don't know. Because I even think about housing, and I think even if we had a recession, I think housing could actually see a pickup in, in terms of amount of people moving because the Fed would have to drop rates, mortgage rates would fall. And so I think you'd actually see a pickup. That's, that's the other thing I'm kind of thinking about. Uh, in terms of autos, they're already in such a tough place. So I don't know, man. This is a tough one, folks. This is a tough one to, to hedge against, especially with this income statement like that, man. It's freaking tempting, but I don't know. And let me uh, pull up Tesla. This should be a very interesting close here, folks. We've definitely seen a little weakness here. Um, so uh, in the chat, uh, some interesting questions. Uh, did you see auto, advanced auto parts crashing? I don't know how uh, advanced auto parts keeps coming up every dang live stream. Uh, what is this going on here? Oh, that's a tough one. Tough one for that stock here today. Dang. Oh, Tesla just turned red, folks. Red alert. Red alert on Tesla Maesla. The baby just turned red. Um, all right. Uh, somebody says, thoughts on Estee Lauder? Uh, obviously, I'm bullish on the long-term Estee Lauder. I haven't started a position yet. I'm hoping that baby goes lower short-term. I would have probably already started a position, but there's so many opportunities out there. Uh, let's see. Somebody says, as a big shareholder, do you use PayPal in your day-to-day -day life? I use PayPal quite a bit um, for many different things, including a lot of things I'll buy online, whether it's like Uber Eats or DoorDash or even a lot of retailers. If, you, if they had the PayPal button, I usually do it because it's just easy because I, you know, literally just scans my face and then boom, it's through versus like a credit card, like having to go to my room and get the wallet. A lot of it's just convenience and through PayPal, it's already hooked up, right? So... I use it quite a bit. Venmo every once in a while, but I don't use Venmo as much. And I know that's the much more popular service for like the average person out there. Um, I also uh, have to pay some independent contractors sometimes with PayPal uh, that are in different countries. Uh, but Venmo, I, I don't use Venmo too often. I might use Venmo once a month, once every other month. Um, it's pretty rare uh, to use Venmo. So anyways, yeah, I, I use obviously PayPal quite a bit. Uh, let's see here. So yes, uh, for a company, is profit more important than cash flow? I mean, obviously everything's important when it comes to the company and kind of judging it if it's, you know, a good company to invest in and things like that. But uh, I always love net income more than anything, right? I, I want to know how, you know, whatever you're bringing through the door in revenue, how much of that revenue actually makes it down to the bottom line. So in, in cash flow, numbers can obviously change dramatically over time as net income numbers can change, especially if you're looking on a gap basis. Because if you're looking on a gap basis for net income, for instance, you're going to have one-time things that mess up, you know, the numbers in a significant way. And so that's why sometimes it pays to look at non-gap numbers uh, versus gap numbers. Because, you know, for instance, like Walgreens, right? Walgreens gap net income has looked horrible recently. But a lot of it's because of some litigation around some of the opioid stuff and, and whatnot that's kind of like more one-time in nature. Uh, so, you know, Meta had a lot of one-time costs last year. Amazon had some of those. Like, you, if you have big layoffs, you have some one-time costs there, right? So, if you do not understand income st statements, balance sheets, cash flows, if you don't understand how you're getting a great deal or if you're getting an okay deal or a bad deal in the market, if you don't understand portfolio all allocation, if you don't understand the balance of growth and value in dividend stocks, if you don't understand how do I scale from five figures to then six figures to seven figures, right? Um, if you don't know anybody who's done it before, if you don't have a network of people that know how to do this, and if you don't have a mentor, 
you know, it's going to be hard to kind of continue to, let's just call it rise the ranks, right? And so if you don't understand any of those things, if you don't have a network, if you don't know anybody that did, apply to join my private group, folks. We've had a lot of people go through there over time and the amount of people that have been able to scale and get to six figures in a portfolio, seven figures is a phenomenal, phenomenal amount. And you can learn so much being part of that. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And the network you can build there is just unprecedented, okay? So if you want to take advantage of that, apply with a pinned comment. Let's get you in there next week and uh, get you up to a much higher level. What we got here? Uh, how about play a guest game on some stocks in the week? Meta, Amazon, PayPal, Tesla, Palantir, NVIDIA. Oh, interesting. Uh, I won't play it on all those stocks. I'll play it on Meta and Amazon. Okay. My guess is end of week, Meta, 335. That's my guess on Meta. My end of week guess on Amazon. Amazon, Amazon. 139. Amazon. 139. All right, I played the guessing game. I want you guys to play the guessing game. Meta and Amazon, they both report this week. What do you guys think Meta ends at this week in terms of stock price come Friday? And what do you think Amazon ends this week come the end of uh, the market close on Friday since I played the guessing game? What do you guys say? Meta and Amazon. What are those stock prices end of this week? Love to hear from you guys. Since I played the guessing game, you guys can play the guessing game now. Kind of looking at the market here into close, it seems like, let's make sure I have refreshed Dow here. It seems like my CNBC is frozen. There we go. Uh, Seems like we're starting to hold up a little better in regards to the market. Uh, Dow's still down about 145 points, but that's down less than it was just very recently here. So this should be an interesting close. We're coming back a bit, coming back a bit. We're trying to buy a bit out there. Uh, let me jump back into the chat here. So anyways, yeah, it's going to be absolute craziness this next few days, folks. Absolute insanity. Uh, somebody said, what amount do you think Meta will beat earnings? I, I covered that recently, but basically I think they're going to likely beat EPS pretty handily. Uh, revenue I'm not convinced with. Revenue would actually be a surprise. If they beat revenue, I'd be surprised. Uh, but I'm feeling very confident about that bottom line. Uh, somebody says, INMD balance sheet impeccable. Uh, I've heard of that stock before. I am... Let's see. Yeah, I've heard of this company before. I can't remember what they do, though. What do they do? Uh, in mode. In mode, in mode, in mode. It's a healthcare related company. Hmm. Oh, they're probably caught up in the Ozempic stuff right now. Everybody's afraid of Ozempic's gonna change the world and. All these companies aren't going to make any more money. I might have to look into that one at some point in time. Uh, could be potentially interesting. But um, let's see here. Um, what do you think the bottom is for PayPal? At this point in time, who the hell knows? Like, you know, I, I would have thought PayPal already bottomed. And yet that stock kept going lower and lower and lower. So, I mean, just shocking. You know, shocking that it's $53 today. So, but, you know, last year was pretty darn shocking with Meta's move. I mean, look at PayPal got all the way down to 52 today. That's crazy. Like, just crazy, crazy. Shocked. You know, shocked it's trading at these sorts of prices. But, you know, I was in shock last year when Meta went under 150. And then when it went under 100, I was in bigger shock. So, you know, that's the market for you. Sometimes stocks can make some freaking crazy, crazy moves. That you're just like, what? What's going on here? Like, I can't believe this is actually happening, right? Uh, can you go over all the company's earnings again this week? Yeah, we'll be talking about all these earnings this week. That's for dang sure. Uh, so we said, what do you think about Alta stock? So Alta stock represents a pretty good value. I don't love Alta because I do believe longer term they have the competitive threat of facing off against Amazon. And so I'm not the biggest fan of that. With that being said, they've fought them off very well. They should continue to fight them off pretty well. But, uh, I mean, look at the company's revenues. 
over the last many years, right? Look at the company's gross profit over the last many years. Look at the company's operating income over the last several years. Look at the company's net income over the last several years. It's extremely impressive. And the good news for Ulta, the stock's come down quite a bit. So it's not trading super expensive like it might have been in the past. You know, we're about 14 times this year's expected numbers for the company. So overall, I think Ulta is probably a buy. I, I'm not buying it, but it's probably a buy. You know, regulatory issues are, are either of the deals that Pippa oh, was just Sintoli. telling yes. us about going to get through the regulatory door. From real big picture perspective, it seems like, you know, the, the two biggest U.S. majors making relatively sizable deals would probably invite some scrutiny. Maybe the administration would want to find a rationale to block them. But this is a commodity business, literally. It's not like there's consumer pricing power. Um, they're a very small percentage of overall production, you know, no matter how much they buy. So I just wonder exactly how much much of a fight it'll be. Um, I do think it's interesting from a corporate strategy point of view, though, uh, the idea of kind of trying to buy your growth as opposed to invest yourself. And, you know, the other, it looks a little bit reactive on Chevron. So he said, would I, uh, what price would I go in Estee Lauder? And the answer is I would already be buying Estee Lauder right now if it wasn't for the fact that there's a million other stocks I want to buy. That's what it really comes down to with Estee Lauder, folks. Uh, production to be companies still on the board if Hess got no premium off their last trade. Well, Joe Terranova today at halftime was like, okay, now what does ConocoPhillips go out and do something? So keep your Very eyes possible. on the space. possible, absolutely. Yeah. Keep your eyes on the space. All right, MGM and Wynn are leading the S&P 500 today. Bullish notes on both today from HSBC. Contessa Brewer, following Wins these a buy. Notes, what can you tell us? This Wins a buy. Today, HSBC puts a price target of $111 on Wynn, currently trading just a little bit higher the $90. They say, look, opportunities abound in Las Vegas. There's a rebound in Macau. There's a new project yep. in the Middle East. All of that, HSBC says, is largely ignored and yep. underpriced by the markets. We saw Win shares up about 2.5% today. MGM shares up about the same, fueled by... Win is incredibly undervalued. Incredibly undervalued. Um, yeah, I've been buying some Win recently and uh, a little heavier. Uh, the stock is incredibly undervalued for a long-term shareholder like myself. The, the bottom line is with Win, and I've owned Win on and off for a long time. When Win goes under 100, it's always a buy. Um, if you ever get Win around the 50 to 60 dollar level, that's like screaming top of your lungs buy, if not considering a call option usually. Um, if Win goes over 200. It's usually a good time or around 200 usually a good time to kind of take some profits in win um but anyways yeah that's just you know i kind of always keep those numbers in mind when it comes to win yeah no doubt about that all right contessa thank you contessa brew two minute warning there's the sound two minutes to go which folks. means i go back to mike santoli well the real fun begins tomorrow yeah the mega caps that we've been waiting for that's when the parade begins yes um you have some decent pullbacks in most of them although meta and, and alphabet actually really not far from their high so those are the two that have i think the most confidence in the fundamental stories uh communication services the upside leader today no None of that is a surprise. Those are the only two, by the way, that are up over a three-month period. Yeah. The ones you said, Alphabet's up near 15%. Uh, and Meta's up seven. Yes. Um, and, and so, you know, maybe the bar is higher there, but you got, you know, Microsoft's had a 10% pullback. Uh, Amazon uh, also has had a little bit of a retrenchment. So, in theory, bar has come down a little bit. Uh, the market in general has been scoffing at even pretty good earnings so far. Uh, on the other hand, it's been, you know, more or less the preliminaries. Uh, the banks, we know that they're kind of wounded, so even if they have a good quarter, you're not going to hey, necessarily let your Tesla, up right? They, then your Tesla, you yeah. got punished. Tesla, uh, it, you know, obviously that's a one-off story, as is Netflix. Sure, sure, But sure. no, I, I, you know, there's a lot of back and forth to it, but it's not as if we've had an embrace of the idea that we have, you know, companies beating by 500 basis points on average versus the estimates. That does not the way the market has traded. It's been weighed down by every other concern we've been talking about for weeks. Yeah, all right, good stuff. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. So yep. we're red now. Dow's down near 200. By the way, I want to show you some pictures, too, because it's wow. a special day. Good close at lows, folks. We actually made money today. We made money. We made money. I don't know. Maybe we made money. I think we made money. Uh, we're going to play our game here in just a bit. Everybody get ready, get ready, get ready. Um, a little bit of a mixed bag here today, but a lot of the big dogs did very well today, um, considering the 
the day it was in the market. But man, you got a lot of Red Dead Redemption out there. There's just a lot of the smaller stocks. And so that goes back to, you know, a day like today, it felt, you know, you look at that heat map. I mean, it feels like it should have been a day where the indexes were down to 3%, right? But it wasn't because a lot of the biggest stocks held up very well. So it goes back to the same exact playbook that has been the same this entire year. The biggest big dogs are performing well, everything else crashing. Um, incredible, right? Incredible. So now we might get some earnings here after the bell. Uh, but before that, let's play our game, folks. Time to get in your guesses. What was the public count up or down here today? Everybody get in your guesses. Get in your guesses in the chat. And I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to throw it up on the screen, folks. I... All right, here it comes, folks. Here comes the airdrop. I've seen a lot of guesses. Very close. All righty, folks. Here we go. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Here's the number. There it is, folks. $10,400 up here today. So, yeah, we got a long way to climb back from where we were at back on Tuesday. Uh, which Tuesday, if I recall, we were at, what, $1.75 million? or so in the public count. So we got damaged heavily Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, overall. Um, should be interesting to see, I wanna see Logitech's earnings here after the bell. I'm hoping Logitech reports. Logitech will give us some insight on how computer equipment's selling, right? Uh, it'll give us a little, in, a little um, context on how Corsair maybe is performing. So, um, Take a peek to see how things closed here. Oh, you know what I need to look at? Overall news. I haven't really seen overall news today. Uh, Oxy Petroleum plunges as Exxon. Chevron mega deals remove potential buyers. Oh, interesting. Lee cycle is called a potential warning for the broad market EV sector. Interesting. Um, NVIDIA AMD said... Uh, AM, NVIDIA AMD said make chips for Microsoft amid Intel dominance. Okay. Uh, somebody did Microsoft earnings preview. Microsoft is kind of a sleepy earnings. Microsoft just always puts up good in numbers. Yeah, I need a Palantir emote ASAP, 100%. I need to get on that, man. Maybe it's a maybe it's a Carp emote. I don't know. We'll have to figure something. And I need to Tesla my Tesla if I don't have one of those yet. Chevron to buy Hess in $53 billion yield, uh, deal to boost production and free cash flow. Jeez. Which magnificent set? PayPal, why am I buying more into earnings despite free falling share price? PayPal shares have fallen through a uh, short term resistance level, declining 12.46%. By the way, if anybody sees Logitech numbers come out, let me know in the chat. If anybody sees Logitech numbers out, let me know in the chat because I'm very interested to see Logitech. Logitech's honestly the only company I care about after hours in seeing um, what they what they put up. That's really the only stock I care about after hours here today is Logitech. I want to see what they report. Uh, PayPal. So PayPal shares have fallen through short-term resistance levels, declined 12.46% compared to the S&P 500. The bear, pay, the bear case for PayPal has intensified due to a change in macroeconomic environment while declining transaction take rates and margin. Despite macroeconomic headwinds, I still see PayPal as my second best value idea and plan to allocate more capital toward it. Uh, this, he says, I have been absolutely incorrect as PayPal shares have fallen through short-term resistance levels. I've been following PayPal closely and still feel like it's one of the most mispriced equities in the market today. I don't want to go through this entire article, but I want to kind of get his uh, recap at the end and what he's saying here. Conclusion. I have several I have I had several internal debates about my top value idea for seeking alpha contest and PayPal is my runner up. There are many attractive companies for the long term investors to consider and Citigroup. Uh, had an edge due to discount to book value, interesting, and a dividend that exceeded 5%. I think the market is incorrectly valuing PayPal shares, but the pain may not be over as shares need to establish a new bottom before they can recover. There are uh, ex 
external risks that investors also need to consider. But as I said in my Citigroup article, from the companies I considered, I feel like PayPal has the most potential for appreciation. And I think fair value is somewhere between 120 to, 100 to $120 for shares of PayPal. And as it trades as a value stock rather than a technology company, PayPal is my second top idea. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I mean, obviously, as somebody that's been buying PayPal stock heavily, I 100% uh, you know, agree that PayPal is a tremendous opportunity. They got the earnings preview on Seeking Alpha, but we don't have any news around it yet. Has Logitech come out yet? No one? No one's got Logitech yet. Okay. Okay. We're waiting on Logitech. Soft landing or a mild recession, our greatest probability is on that soft landing. Um, but that said, our chief economist has flat growth penciled in for the fourth quarter, which is going to feel like a steep deceleration compared to the third quarter. As we look at where um, different sectors look attractive to us, I think the overweight to technology is a combination of a structural growth story, um, a high quality profitability story, as well as a rates more likely to come down story. And we saw that today with rates yeah. coming off a little bit. Um, and the NASDAQ being the only outperformer. Um, I'd be a little bit more cautious on something like Staples, where we see continued disinflation um, and probably a higher, a, a greater degree of difficulty for those Staples companies to pass through price increases. All right. Megan Shu, Vinu Krishna, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now the S&P 500 struggling for a direction to begin the week, but Mike Santoli sees one bright spot in the market that has outperformed today and over the past year. He's at the market dashboard. Mike? Yeah, John, a pretty consistent outperformance by the so-called quality factor in the market. And, you know, you would always think maybe that quality should shine through, but it doesn't happen in all market environments. But this is... Ooh, this is actually pretty interesting. L is MSCI quality factor ETF. Oh, somebody said what selling point uh, for PayPal. It's so far away that I can't even consider selling PayPal for such a freaking long time. To neutral. So it does... I, I can see myself holding PayPal for years to go in the future, to be honest. And seven, which are known to have strong balance sheets and, and consistent profit margins and all those quality attributes, it goes across all industries. So even within energy, financials, it's picking the stocks that seem to have uh, those quality, kind of more durable characteristics. Uh, and you see that this turn, as so many things, this market came right as the uh, SVB threatened, the failure threatened to uh, tighten up financial conditions quite a bit. Now, when it comes to consumer cyclicals, the market... Somebody asked uh, my opinion on Fubo short term. It really just depends on when their numbers finally come out and what their subscriber numbers are. By the way, everybody in the chat, if you haven't already followed here, make sure you follow. we got a crazy next few days. So where they're trading right now, you can see those losses over that period. It's not that far above where uh, they where they were at the bottom in the COVID sell-off. So it shows you uh, that they've been cheapened a lot. The uh, growth outlooks are treated with a lot of skepticism. I'm never one to say that a recession is priced in before it's become evident, but this part of the market has really braced for a slowdown uh, more than 100%. most. hundred uh, percent. Mike, Absolutely does right quality about that. tend Absolutely. to index uh, you know, a, a little bigger? Would we see a similar bifurcation between the S&P 500 and, and the Russell 2000 right around that same period as well? Yes, absolutely. There's no doubt that, you know, the S&P 500 in general, especially over time, has become more of a quality growth uh, index just based on the market caps and, and just businesses getting better. I, I know Bank of America has made this point quite a bit. And that's exactly when things did diverge between better balance sheets, producers of cash flow as opposed to consumers of capital. All right. Mike, thanks. Uh, we talk with guests sometimes about how cheap the Russell is compared to everything else. Well, quality is another way of looking at it. Quality is another way of looking at it. you got to break it all down into these different definitions and be very clear on what specifically you're looking at because there's value. Still don't have Logitech tracks, numbers. There's quality value. Indeed. On down the road. Yeah. Down the road. <laughs> well, the countdown is on to earnings from Microsoft and Alphabet. They are due out less than 20. Man, still don't have Logitech numbers. Come on, Logitech. Get these flipping flapjack and earnings out, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. They don't report till like super late tonight. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah, you're right about that. When somebody asked my opinion on Target stock, I've been buying Target stock the last several months. Uh, it's easy For me, it's an easy throw it in the filing cabinet type stock. Um, so I've been buying it. Uh, fixed down almost 6% here today. Yeah, and yet you would think 
if anything, VIX should be up significantly today. When you really see the market action today, right, and you see how really it was a volatile day, it was a roller coaster ride, and yet to see the VIX down is is pretty wild. Tesla discusses the Department of Justice probes over vehicle range, personal benefits, and more. Yeah, yeah. Tesla's gonna, you know, there's just so many damn overhangs for Tesla stock in the short term. You know, between obviously the higher interest rate environment, there's the government's after them. You know, Elon Musk has burned some bridges. Let's just call it that. The whole Twitter drama. He's made enemies of a lot of politicians. You know, there's a lot that's going against Tesla here short term, folks. Um, let's see. Um, Somebody asked, what do I think about Disney's fall? Yeah, I mean, the thing with Disney is, you know, obviously traditionally it's such a great company and usually would be seen at least years ago as one of the safest stocks in the stock market, right? Uh, but the key is that's years ago and a lot of people don't view Disney in that same light here today. And so um, ultimately at the end of the day when it comes to, uh, to Disney, I just can't get behind the stock right now. And their earnings are a mess. Their earnings are a mess, folks. And I don't see that magically fixing itself. Obviously, analysts expect it to fix itself over this next you know bit of time here. But the company is just in a bad spot right now. Many of their businesses are just not in a good spot, man. And uh, there's a lot of questions on what they're going to do. Are they going to sell ABC? Are they going to sell this off? Are they going to sell that? And what happens with sports rights and what are they going to do with ESPN? There's just a lot of questions that, you know, there's too many other opportunities in this market. That's the thing. There's too many dang other opportunities. So much love as always. Thank you, everybody that joins me. I appreciate y'all. And uh, get ready to have some crazy live streams the next three days because it's going to be wild, wild, wild. Much love, folks, and uh, peace.